Welcome to our tutorial on intravenous catheter placement. Peripheral catheters are used for multiple things, including administration of fluids and medications to sick animals, as well as diagnostic sampling when patients are in the hospital. Peripheral catheters are most commonly placed in either the cephalic vein or the lateral saphenous vein. During this lab, you're going to learn to place a catheter in the cephalic vein. There are 14 steps to intravenous catheter placement. 1. Ask handler to occlude the vessel and then palpate the limb to assess vessel location. 2. Select an appropriate size catheter and inspect it for flaws. 3. Tear three pieces of 1 inch white tape long enough to circle the animal's limb one and a half times. Tear one piece in half to make two one half inch wide pieces. Place the tape within easy reach during catheter placement. 4. Clip a 3 inch by 3 inch area over the catheter placement site and aseptically prepare it. 5. Have the handler re-occlude the vessel while you hold the limb at the carpal region with your non-dominant hand. 6. Using your dominant hand, insert the catheter unit bevel side up through the skin and into the vessel. 7. Advance until blood is visible in the hub of the catheter stylet. 8. Stabilize the stylet and slowly advance the catheter portion off of it and into the vessel until the catheter hub is flush with the skin at the site of puncture. 9. Holding the catheter hub in place, remove and discard the stylet. 10. Attach an injection port to the catheter. Ask the handler to release occlusion of the vessel. 11. Wrap the end of a 1 half inch wide piece of tape around the catheter hub being careful not to cover the rim or pull the catheter out of the leg. Wrap the remaining length around the limb, securing the catheter to the skin. 12. Take a 1 inch piece of tape and place it across the limb, adhering it to the skin under the catheter hub. Wrap the remaining length around the limb and over the hub. 13. Take the remaining half inch piece of tape and place it under the catheter hub, sticky side up. Wrap the free ends of the tape over the top of the catheter, forming an X, and then down and around the limb. 14. Slowly flush the catheter with saline to confirm its patency. Let's go through these steps individually. Step 1. Ask the handler to occlude the vessel and palpate the limb to assess vessel location. Here we can see that just like with the dog, the cat is restrained by using a hand to hold the head, and then the other hand is being used to roll the vein upward on the limb with the thumb across the inside of the elbow to cause the vessel to stand out. Step two, select an appropriate size catheter and inspect it for flaws. The most common catheter sizes used for cephalic catheters are going to be 20 gauge or 22 gauge catheters. For patients that you will typically see on service, a 22 gauge catheter is usually the right choice. We can see Shanna popping the back of the case off and then examining it to make sure there's no burrs or defects in the catheter and then placing it back down in easy reach. Step three, tear three pieces of one inch white tape long enough to circle the limb one and a half times. Tear one piece in half to make two half inch wide pieces. Place the tape within easy reach during catheter placement. Step four, clip a three inch by three inch area over the catheter placement site and aseptically prepare it. Here we can see Shanna turn the clippers on. You'll note she took the clippers away from the cat when she started them so that they wouldn't be frightening to the cat. And then she's bringing them back in to clip thoroughly. It is very important that you clip a full three by three inch area on top of the limb. Some people like to go ahead and clip all the way around the back side of the limb as well in order to make sure that there's not hair that's going to get in the way of the tape. That is optional, but it is important that regardless of whether you do the back side or not, you thoroughly clip the front and the top. Once the hair has been thoroughly clipped, then the leg has to be aseptically prepared. To do this, we alternate scrubbing the site gently using chlorhexidine scrub and alcohol solution. 
And so what you can see is Shanna's taking a chlorhexidine scrub soaked cotton ball and she's going to scrub outward from the center. So she's going to start at the point where she intends to place the catheter and then make circular movements expanding outward from that site with the scrub and then she'll follow it with an alcohol soaked cotton ball and then she's going to do again with a scrub soaked cotton ball as you can see here and then an alcohol soaked cotton ball and you want to do this at least three times making sure that you very thoroughly cleanse the area. You'll note she is not vigorously scrubbing the site because that actually will cause trauma. Instead she is doing gentle smooth swabs but starting in the center and working her way always outward. And with that one you could really see the alcohol drenching its way down the leg which is really important. We want to make sure that we get it nice and sterile. Then we're going to leave it time to dry. Step 5. We'll have the handler reocclude the vessel while holding the limb at the carpal region with the non-dominant hand. So here you can see Shan is getting a good grip on that hand making sure her hands are nice and clean and dry and then the handler is occluding the vessel again by wrapping her thumb across the inside of the elbow and wrapping outward to bring the vessel up into a stabilized position on top of the leg. Step 6. Now we've moved to the other side of the cat so you can see the vessel really clearly there. With the dominant hand, she's going to insert the catheter unit bevel side up through the skin and in the vessel. So she's stabilizing the leg with her non-dominant hand and using her thumb to some degree to stabilize the vessel. And then she's going ahead and gently advancing the catheter at about a 10 degree angle through the skin and into the vessel. Once she's done that, and you could appreciate the flash of blood that came up the catheter very quickly, she's going to wait until that blood fills the hub of the catheter stylet right here. And so we can see blood starting to fill the hub of the catheter, and at that point, she's going to stabilize the stylet and then slowly advance the catheter portion off of the stylet and into the vessel until the hub is flush with the skin at the site of punctures. So she's going to do that with the tip of her index finger while the rest of her hand is holding the catheter unit stable back here. So pop and then holding the rest of the stylet stabilized with her thumb and her ring finger. She's going to use her index finger to advance the catheter till the hub is flush with the skin. Step 9. While holding the catheter hub in place with the tip of her index finger there, and often your thumb, she's going to gently remove the stylet and discard it. So you can see the blood filling the hub of the stylet, just as it's filling the hub of the catheter. She's going to pull that out and then use her thumb to keep the catheter stable so it does not come out of the skin or vessel. Step 10 has two parts and they're done simultaneously. It's important as soon as that stylet is taken out to put an injection port on the catheter so you don't end up with blood everywhere. And you want while you're doing this at the same time to ask your handler to release the occlusion of the vessel so that excess blood does not come out the hub. So you can see that happened really quickly. We didn't even get to see because Shanna's hand um, was obscuring our field of view the application of the port. What we're going to do is just go ahead and as that catheter stylet is taken off and held stable, bring in the, the port and just screw it on right there. She screwed it on while the handler was releasing occlusion of the vessel. It is that simple. And you'll note she's using her thumb against the hub. She's not applying too much pressure so it doesn't pop out, but she's keeping it straight on to the vessel so that we do not end up losing the catheter. Step 11. It's time to start securing that catheter before it can get in too much trouble. So we're going to wrap the end of one of our narrow pieces of tape or half inch pieces of tape around the catheter hub right here. Being careful not to cover the rim up here and also being careful not to pull the catheter out of the vessel. That sounds silly but it is actually a challenge. So you saw she did sticky side up and then she wrapped the tape back on itself there. She's drawing off the fur where there's blood on it and continuing to wrap around all the way around and then securing the tape onto itself to secure the catheter to the skin. Step 12, she'll take a one inch piece of tape and place it across the limb, adhering it to the skin under the catheter right here where there's still a little blood. So she's gonna go over that blood to get the hair out of the way. 
So she slid over the blood to get the hair out of the way and then wrap the tape around the catheter site right here to secure it in well. So again, we're gonna take the tape and slide it under the injection port and over the fur and then wrap it across over the top so that we're really securing the tape and the catheter in place. Step 13. Take the remaining half inch wide piece of tape, as you can see there, place it under the hub, sticky side up, and then wrap the free hands over the top in an X pattern, and then down and under around the limb. And what we're doing here is securing the injection port. So we'll watch it again. We're gonna put the tape under the port, sticky side up, and then cross it around onto the injection port to secure the injection port, first one side, than the other in an X to make sure that that hub doesn't go anywhere either. And then finally, after we've done that, we're going to slowly flush the catheter with saline to confirm its patency. It's important to note that steps 10 through 14 are all done really pretty darn quickly to make sure that catheter doesn't clog. And so she's going ahead and injecting fluid through the injection hub to confirm that it's flowing freely and we're not seeing any evidence of blowing down here of the vein that would suggest the catheters come out of place. To review, there are 14 steps. First, you'll ask the handler to restrain the animal and include the vessel so you can palpate the limb and assess the vessel location. Then you will select an appropriate size catheter, usually a 22 gauge is gonna be what you want for a small animal, and inspect it for flaws. You'll tear three pieces of one inch white tape long enough to circle the animal's limb one and a half times, and then tear one piece in half to make two half inch wide pieces. You wanna place the tape with an easy reach during catheter placement. Then you will clip a three inch by three inch area over the catheter placement site and aseptically prepare it by alternating chlorhexidine scrub and alcohol scrubs. So we'll circle outward from the center of the site using a scrub and then circle outward from the center of the site using alcohol and alternate those for at least three times in order to make sure that the area is truly sterile. Then we'll have the handler reocclude the vessel while holding the limb at the carpal region with the non-dominant hand so that you can use the dominant hand to insert the catheter bevel side up through the skin and into the vessel. Then you will advance the catheter unit until blood is visible in the hub of the catheter stylet. As soon as that happens, you'll stabilize the stylet and slowly advance the catheter portion off and into the vessel until the catheter hub is flush with the skin at the site of puncture. Holding the catheter hub in place with one of the fingers of that non-dominant hand, you'll remove and discard the stylet. Step 10, you'll attach an injection port to the catheter in order to seal up the opening and make sure we don't get blood everywhere. You want at the exact same time as you're removing that stylet and attaching the injection port to ask the handler to release occlusion of the vessel. Step 11, wrap the end of a half inch wide piece of tape around the catheter hub, sticky side up, being careful not to cover the rim or pull the catheter out of the vessel. Wrap the remaining length around the limb, securing the catheter to the skin. Then, take a one inch piece of tape and place it across the limb, adhering it to the skin under the catheter hub. Wrap the remaining length around the limb and over the hub. 13, take the remaining half inch piece of tape and place it under the catheter sticky side up. Wrap the free ends of the tape over the top of the injection port to form an X and then down and under and around the limb. Finally, step 14, slowly flush the catheter with saline to confirm its patency. Now it's your turn.